Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. I wanted to put together a guide to Void Stones, what they are and how to get them, and my motivation for this is that a video that I did that tangentially touches on this subject a couple of years ago keeps getting search traffic. That video isn't answering the questions that people who want a guide to Void Stones are looking for these days, so I wanted to make a video that does. The super short version is that there are four quest items, two of which you'll get soon after reaching tier 16 maps for the first time, and two of which will come quite some bit later. And what they do is they give you some customization over your endgame atlas. The first one increases the tier of every map on your atlas by three, and the second and subsequent ones increase it by a further four. This, however, is hard capped above at 16. So for instance, in patch 3.23, a strand map is tier 3 with no void stone socketed, tier 6 with one void stone, tier 10 with two, tier 14 with three, and then while tier 14 should be tier 18, it's hard capped at 16, and so that's where it remains. It's important to note that this doesn't modify maps that you've already looted, it only modifies maps you loot in the future. And if you want to turn your void stones off for a little while after you earn them, you can take them out of your atlas, and there's even a little storage spot on the left hand side of the atlas you can put them in while you're not using them until you want to use them again. Now these come from bosses, and I want to go through what those bosses are and all the details on how you get to them. Additionally, you might find it useful to download these notes, I'll put a link to them down in the description of this video below. One more reminder though, this doesn't modify maps you own, it only modifies maps that you loot in the future, and the game picks which tier of map to award you first, and then and only then does it determine which specific map to award you. So there are four Voidstone bosses, these are the Searing Exarch, the Eater of Worlds, the Maven, and the Uber Elder Encounter. With the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds versions, the first time you encounter these, it'll be a special quest version, and that version does count for getting your Void Stones. With the Uber Elder Encounter, this is not one of the Uber Pinnacle bosses that were added in patch 3.18 and are very difficult. They're designed to challenge the most experienced of players. There is an Uber version of the Uber Elder Encounter, but that is monster level 85 and it's completely unnecessary while you're chasing your Void Stones. It's something you can research later if you're interested, but it's going to be miles beyond you at the point that you're still learning to get your Void Stones. The Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds Void Stones are the ones you get first. These are the easier two Void Stone bosses to defeat, and they're far easier to access, especially the first time. Of the third and fourth Void Stones, the Maven encounter is easier to get to than Uber Elder in most cases, although there's the odd occasional build that will find it easier to get to the Uber Elder encounter than to get to the Maven. And additionally, most players find the Maven to be the easier of those two bosses to defeat, although this is certainly not universally the case, and there's a few builds that the Maven can be somewhat of a counter to, if you're playing a build like Righteous Fire, then you'll find the Maven to be more difficult than a lot of other builds do. So let's talk about how you get to the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds. These are encountered through Breadcrumbs quests that you'll be given as you progress through the Atlas. Firstly, you will get an upgrade to your map device, one of the first tier 6 and above maps that you run, and that will give you the ability to call a Maven in to watch you fight bosses. Once you get that, you'll also get an additional quest to do what players term the Maven 3-way encounter. And about the time that you do the Maven 3-way encounter, and also start working in tier 8 and above maps, you'll then get access to two further map device modifications, which will allow you to call a Searing Exarch to watch maps, and the Eater of Worlds to watch maps. I do believe there's a small amount of RNG on getting these, but it's something that you'll get pretty quickly. You then want to follow the exact text of the quests that are given to you from the Envoy. The key thing is that he's going to tell you to do a tier 8 map first while the Searing Exarch watches, then a tier 9, then a tier 10, then a tier 11, and so on all the way up to tier 16. There is a little bit of an intermission after the tier 11 one, we'll get to that in a sec. And at each step, anything higher will do, but that won't give you credit towards the later step. So if you have a higher tier map than you meant to have early in progression, this doesn't rocket you past multiple steps on this ladder, but it does allow you to progress past one step on the ladder. Now, there's an intermission after you reach tier 11 on each of these. Here, you're going to need to fight a mini boss. For the Eater of Worlds, this is going to be the Infinite Hunger, which is pictured here. And for the Searing Exarch, it's the Black Star, which will be pictured soon. These bosses aren't trivial, but if you do fail one, and by fail I mean lose all six portals, then you're still able to just try again. All you need to do is just repeat that tier 11 map step, and then you'll immediately get a new invitation that will let you try again. Now once the quest requires you to do a tier 16 and you complete a tier 16, at that point you'll get a new invitation to either the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds itself. At this point, go and fight that boss, and again, it's got that forgiving mechanic in place that if you do fail at this phase, all you need to do is just do another tier 16 map and you'll get a replacement invitation, and then you'll be able to get your first two Void Stones. The versions you'll receive of these encounters at this point in progression are nerfed versions of what you'll be able to then fight later if you continue to pursue the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds influence later. 
However, to get to the other two Voidstone bosses, you're going to want to start mapping with Maven Influence. We'll get to that in a sec. Here's what the four invitations for the Eldritch bosses look like. The Writhing Invitation and Polaric Invitation for the mini bosses. The Screaming Invitation and the Incandescent Invitation for the main bosses. But the first ones of each that you get will be quest items and therefore will be green. Okay, so let's get on to the Maven. And yes, in the background I am using an image of the Uber Maven fight rather than the Maven. But they're pretty similar except there's a bit more screen clutter in the Uber fight because there's more additional monsters that are in play in that encounter. Now, in my opinion, and not all agree with this, this is the easier of the two hard Voidstone bosses. You can access this by doing the Maven's Crucible fights when you are at monster level 83. So this is the Maven's 10-way encounters, which you'll build up to as you continue to map Maven Influenced, but it's also a number of special encounters. The special encounters are the quickest way to get there. These are things like an arena fight against all four Shaper Guardians. We'll discuss what the Shaper Guardians are a bit more when we talk about Uber Elder. But basically, every time you do one of these Maven Invitations at monster level 83, you get at least one and potentially as many as 18 or 19 Crescent Splinters as a reward. 10 Crescent Splinters gives you an access key into the fight with the Maven. A very important difference with the Maven. Failing the Maven is a really big deal because you will not get quick access back to it again. If you do fail a Maven fight, you are back to square one. You're going to have to collect all of those entrance crescent splinters again, build up another 10 of them, and then make another attempt at it. Additionally, if you're in Trade League, the crescent splinters and the Maven's Ritz actually sell for quite a bit of currency, especially in patch 3.23 with all the inflation going on at the moment. But even outside of this league, it's usually the case that each splinter is about 20 chaos. Now in Trade League, it'll feel pretty wasteful to run the Maven below Uber difficulty. That's because the Uber version of the fight has a number of additional very, very, very valuable drops. There's the Unique Flask Progenesis, there's Awakened in Power, Awakened in Light, and Awakened in Hance. That said, getting your Voidstone makes it worthwhile doing the Maven on non-Uber version exactly once in a league. In Trade League, you also have the option of what's called a Maven Voidstone Curry Service. In this situation, someone else who is specialised at the Maven or is just very experienced with the fight does the Maven fight for you and then calls you in when the Maven is pretty low on health. You then come into the arena and just sort of kite around and stay safe until the carry kills the boss for you. And then you'll have some sort of negotiation between you and the carry service as to exactly how much you give them in exchange for helping you out with this fight. These are arranged in a couple of trade discords and also in the in-game trade channel Trade820. Now there is an Atlas Keystone that is very useful for getting access to both the Maven and also Uber Elder, and this is Destructive Play. This has some pretty awkward wording on it, so I'll just explain exactly what it says and what it does. The text is, the Maven summons 1-3 to three additional bosses when witnessing map bosses. Modifiers to the final map boss in each map also apply to these summoned bosses. Now, modifiers to the final map boss in each map means things like the remnants of the past node which says final map boss in each map, has a 3% chance to drop an Elder Guardian map and a 3% chance to drop a Shaper Guardian map. So this will then apply not just to the final map boss in the map, but also to all of the additional map bosses that the Maven calls into that map. So you'll have to do a much harder fight, you'll be fighting potentially as many as four map bosses at once, but in exchange for completing that, you'll be rewarded with a lot more of these Atlas mini boss maps. Now I mentioned earlier that the level 83 Maven arenas are the way that you get your Maven's Crescent Splinters. And you'll get those a lot faster with Destructive Play, because Destructive Play will give you access to some of the Atlas mini-boss maps, like Shaper Guardian maps, Elder Guardian maps, Conqueror of the Atlas occupied maps, and also Synthesis maps. All of which you can then run with Maven Witness, and then eventually fight them again in the level 83 Maven's Crucible encounters. So this will give you a lot more access to Maven's Invitation the Formed, Maven's Invitation the Twisted in particular, which will then give you more access to the Maven. This keystone will also help you get a lot more access to the Shaper fight, the Elder fight, and the Uber Elder fight, which is both Shaper and Elder at the same time. So let's talk about Uber Elder next. This is the most complex of them to gain access to, and it's also probably the most difficult to gain access to, and I would argue the hardest of these fights. So in this fight, you need to defeat the Shaper and the Elder at the same time. This fight can be tough, and failing it really hurts because it'll undo a lot of the progress you've made, in gathering all the fragments you need in order to face the Uber Elder encounter. Once more, despite this having the Uber in its name, it is not one of those level 85 ultra endgame bosses. To access Uber Elder if RNG smiles upon you, you require two fragments from the Shaper and two fragments from the Elder. However, there's actually two different Shaper fragments and you need a set of each of them, and there's two different Elder fragments and you need a set of each of those as well. 
So getting a duplicate of one of these fragments can be quite a setback on your path to Uber Elder, and it will happen most of the time because of the way probability works. On average, you're going to need to kill the Shaper three times, and you're going to need to kill the Elder three times in order to access Uber Elder for the first time. To get to the Shaper, you'll need to complete the Maze of the Minotaur, Pit of the Chimera, Forge of the Phoenix, and the Lair of the Hydra. These are some of those Atlas mini-boss maps that you can get with the Destructive Play and Remnants of the Past setup. Now here for getting access to Shaper, these maps can be transformed into each other through the use of Horizon Orbs. So Horizon Orbs are absolutely your friend here, they will have your back. To get to the Elder, you'll need to defeat the Eradicator, Enslaver, Purifier and the Constrictor. Maps occupied by these again will occasionally drop upon you killing a map boss, and much more frequently if you are using Destructive Play and Remnants of the Past from the top of the Atlas. However this time, if you've got the wrong combination of maps, let's say that you've got three Purifier ones, one Enslaver one, and no Eradicator and no Constrictor, it's still the case that Horizon Orbs are your friend, but this time they're that prankster friend that sits there and laughs at your ill fortune. They will not help you convert one of these into another, although if you're particularly desperate, Harvest will allow you to convert not the maps but the fragments. So if you can defeat the Purifier a couple of extra times more than you need, then Harvest does have an option that allows you to convert a Purifier fragment into perhaps a Constrictor fragment by RNG, but this is a last resort, at least if you're not playing in trade. If you're playing in trade, you can usually get a one-for-one one exchange or pretty close to it by trading with other players. Or alternately, Kirak missions are another thing that might help you get over some of these hurdles. However, it's important to note that Kirak missions cannot be Maven witnessed, and as a result, they cannot give you any progress towards your next Maven's Invitation, the Twisted. So that's something else to keep in mind. You probably still want to do them if you're missing a specific fragment and you get that fragment appearing as an option in one of the Kirak missions, but it's not a perfect solution. So you're going to need to beat these bosses at least two times each and probably three or more times, depending upon the exact luck that you get in terms of getting the Elder Fragments. When you do get to the Elder himself, he will be quite a letdown in comparison. I think he's a lot easier than the Eradicator is, even if the Eradicator has no map mods in play at all. Shaper is a bit tougher, and Shaper can be harder than the eight mini bosses are. Now where the Maven fight is deterministic to access, accessing Uber Elder does have a lot of RNG layers along the way, and typically this process takes longer than the Maven fight takes to access. Not always the case, you can get a bit lucky with Uber Elder as well, but normally it's going to take you longer to get there than it does for the Maven. Which of the two bosses is harder is subjective, and once more, you do not need to pay attention to the level 85 version of this fight. It's for an optional challenge to return to miles after the point where you've mastered your Void Stones and a whole bunch of other things about the Atlas. Now there's a number of other important unlocks that you might want to know about as well. Void Stones being the biggest single upgrades to your Atlas, there are a few other ones that you should be aware of. Firstly, there are Sextants. These are applied to Void Stones, so you get access to the Sexton system as soon as you get your first Void Stone, and Sextants keep getting better as you unlock more and more Void Stones. Secondly, there is the 5-way Atlas device. This allows you to modify your maps with up to 4 Scarabs rather than being limited by 3. This comes from completing a Legion-specific endgame encounter, the Domain of Timeless Conflict, when it's accessed through the use of four different Timeless Emblems. If you're playing in Solo Cell Found, you'll need to map for a little while in order to get these four. If you're playing in Trade League, it's probably best to just buy all of the Emblems that are not the Maraketh one, and just run it yourself. Once you go into the four-way Domain of Timeless Conflict, you'll need to kill each of the four bosses under a time limit, but this time limit is extremely, extremely generous. Once you've done that though, you will then have the 5-way map device for the rest of that league. Finally, there are favourite maps, and you'll get your first one of these when you complete a tier 16 map. You get additional ones for void stone bosses, but you'll also be able to see the details of what's required to unlock all of the rest of them. Two of them are quite a bit more difficult than the others. The second hardest to access is from completing the Cortex, and the hardest is unlocked by defeating Maven's Invitation the Feared, which is by far the hardest of the Maven encounters, and is something that is not all that much easier than the level 85 Uber encounters that we were talking about a couple of times. I would suggest there's nothing wrong with just getting the other 11, and then coming back for that when your character is much, much, much stronger, to the point that you find Uber Elder is now a cakewalk. At that point, then you might be ready to take on Maven's Invitation the Feared. Anyways, that's a summary of Void Stones that hopefully is a lot more useful than the out-of-date video from 2022 that kept getting search hits was. If you've got any comments or questions, fire away down below. I'll also put the notes that I used in this video, I'll link them down in the description below if you find they're a useful checklist. When you apply sections to your Void Stones, may you get interesting results.